The Iran crisis, America held hostage, day 58. It's been a special events presentation of ABC News. This is ABC. Seven update with news people Marshall Ladendorf and Ted Mullins. Sports with Wayne DeZubak and meteorologist Charlie Martin. Good evening. The Soviet Union has now acknowledged the presence of its troops in Afghanistan. The Soviet newspaper Pravda decreed the troops were a limited military contingent responding to what the paper called imperialistic interference. State Department spokesman Hotting Carter took bristling exception to those claims, saying the Soviet action is far more than limited. Carter estimates up to 70,000 Soviet troops are either in Afghanistan or poised along its border. Several thousand have been moved to Herat, less than 100 miles from the Iranian border. And five airborne battalions and a motorized division control everything moving in and out of the city of Kabul. President Carter, in an interview with ABC's Frank Reynolds, promised stronger action than stiff protest notes. I think it's imperative, Frank, that in the next few days when we after we consult with, with one another, that the leaders of the world make it clear to the Soviets that they cannot have taken this action to violate world peace, not only in that region, but throughout the world, without paying severe political consequences. And what we will do about it, I, can't not, I cannot yet say. But, but to repeat myself, this action on the Soviets has, has made a, a more a dramatic change, in my own opinion, of what the Soviets' ultimate goals are anything they've done in the previous time I've been in office. But what we and the other nations allied with us do will involve more than stiff notes of protest. Yes, it will. It is day 58 of the crisis between the United States and Iran, and there are new developments. The UN Security Council has passed another resolution on the stalemate. It sets a January 7th deadline for Iran to release the American captives. If that doesn't happen, the council will meet again to consider what to do next. Among the alternatives, a break in economic relations, diplomatic relations, and communications. The vote on today's resolution was 11 to nothing with four abstentions, including the Soviet Union. Part of that resolution called for UN Secretary General Kurt Waldheim to negotiate the release of the American hostages. Waldheim is spending the night in Paris and is expected to arrive in Tehran tomorrow afternoon. It is uncertain what kind of reception he'll have. The Iranian government says it will talk to him. The militants occupying the embassy say they won't even allow him inside the compound, and no one knows if the Ayatollah will meet with him. Meanwhile, the American public got a glimpse of the hostages today. An Iranian film showing Christmas services for the captives was finally released for airing on American television. The Lincoln City Council has taken the first step toward the possible demolition of a landmark Cornhusker Hotel in the downtown area. The council has agreed to study a plan to build a multi-million dollar facility on its place. Capitol Bureau Chief Doug Parrott reports. The Cornhusker has been vacant since June of 1978 when the Radisson Corporation shut down the facility because it was losing money. The structure was later sold to a Lincoln bank whose directors have been working on ways to save it or redevelop the block. Now a Wisconsin development firm wants to tear down the existing building and replace it with a modern $35 million facility. The structure would include 300 hotel rooms, a convention center seating 1,500, 120,000 square feet of office space, 100 apartments, and some possible retail stores. But developers say the city must pay a share of the cost to make it go. Today, the city council held a public hearing on spending $47,000 of tax money for an economic feasibility study of the proposal. Several groups, such as the Chamber of Commerce, favored the study, saying there's a real need for more hotel and convention space. But several citizens objected to spending city tax dollars on private industry. If the city wants to build parking lots and hotels and office buildings for private enterprise and take the loss and ensure me a profit, believe me, I'll come in with a plan for you. But I don't believe that that's the role of private enterprise. I believe the role of private enterprise is to go out and do it themselves. I don't believe it's the city's function to make sure that private enterprise has the types of facilities that they really want. The council approved the spending of the money for the feasibility study, but they emphasized they have not committed themselves or tax money to the construction of anything. 
That decision will come at a later time. Doug Parrott, Newswatch 7 Update, Lincoln. Business was brisk today at the Douglas County Treasurer's Office, the reason people coming in to pay the 1980 property tax bill. According to Assistant Chief Deputy County Treasurer Norman Suba, today is traditionally the busiest day. By paying their property taxes today, taxpayers can claim an additional deduction on their 1980 tax return. Most of the tax statements were higher this year than last because of the countywide property.